Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I'm back with another vintage G.I. Joe action figure toy review. And the last few videos that I've done have all been vehicles, so I wanted to get back to doing the uh, actual single action figures. And so today I'm going to do the 1982 Cobra Soldier. Now this was not known as the Cobra Soldier on the packaging and the file card. It, he was simply called Cobra the Enemy. But these were the Cobra Soldiers. This was the rank and file of the Cobra organization. And I really liked this figure because, for one thing, I think he looks really nice in the blue. But uh, these were really the guys that the G.I. Joe team faced up against. Uh, of course, Cobra Commander was in charge, but when it came to doing battle, it was these guys who actually faced G.I. Joe, uh, and these were the guys that G.I. Joe had to defeat uh, on a daily basis. So these were, I think, the, the real backbone behind Cobra. The Cobra Soldier, uh, also sometimes known as the Cobra Trooper, came with one accessory, a black Dragonov sniper rifle. Now this version that I have is actually a dark gray, so this may not be an original rifle. I'll have to check on that. And I, as you can see, I have it sticky tacked into his hand because this this uh, a copy of the Cobra Soldier has a little bit of a stress mark on the inside of his palm, and I don't want to stress the plastic anymore by taking the gun in and out. So for the purpose of this review, the, the his weapon is going to just stay in his hand. It may be kind of difficult to see because the contrast is not great, but the Cobra Soldier had a red Cobra symbol on his chest. This 1982 version had the typical 1982 action figure articulation. He could turn his head from side to side. His shoulder would turn all the way around. He could move his arm at the elbow up and down. He was held together with an, a rubber O-ring that would allow his torso to move a little bit. His legs at the hip could move about 90 degrees and he could bend at the knee. Now all of the 1982 versions of G.I. Joe action figures were re-released in 1983 with swivel arm battle grip, which added a point of articulation here at the bicep that would allow the arms to swivel. Now I do not have an example of the 1983 swivel arm Cobra Soldier, but I do have this. This would have been identical to the 1983 Cobra Soldier, but as you can see, there is no symbol on his chest. This is probably a Viper glider pilot. The reason I say that is that the Viper glider pilot was identical to the Cobra Soldier, except that he had a silver Cobra symbol on his chest. And the silver paint actually wore off much easier than the red paint. So often you run across these with no symbol at all on his chest, uh, and that's the only way you'd really know that this was once a Viper pilot. But he does have the swivel arm battle grip, so I can demonstrate that to you. This articulation at the bicep that allows his arms to swing in and out like this, which allows him to hold his weapons with a two-handed grip. So that was a nice new feature that was released in 1983. Now we have to compare the Cobra Soldier to the Cobra Officer, which also was released in 1982. They are very similar, and people sometimes have a hard time telling them apart. This is the 1982 swivel arm version of the Cobra Officer. As you can see, he had a silver Cobra symbol, which on this is worn off somewhat, but is partially still there. And I'm actually ha happy to have one that has any of the silver symbol still there. A lot of times you'll run across these Cobra officers 
with the symbol completely worn off as the Viper Pilots was. It may be difficult to see on camera, but the coloring of the blue is slightly different as well. The Cobra Officer is a darker blue, and the Cobra Soldier really is just a, a slight sh a shade lighter. But they are so similar that at a glance you might not be able to tell the difference between the two. Of course, other differences, the Cobra Officer had this uh, more elaborate webbing, and uh, the Cobra Soldier had knee pads, whereas the Cobra Officer did not. They both had knives sculpted onto their thigh, but the knives were different. They, the waist piece looks about the same, so they did share that in common. And although the head looks the same at first glance, the Cobra Officer has this kind of V-shape sculpted on, apparently to indicate that he is an officer. One thing that I have always been curious about is why some Cobras have the red symbol and others have the silver symbol. Now, if it were just these two characters, you would say that the symbol, silver symbol indicates an officer, whereas the red symbol indicates a non-commissioned officer or just a rank-and-file soldier. But the other Cobra uh, character issued in 1982 was Cobra Commander. He was a mail-away uh, offer in 1982, but in 1983 he was re-released, again with the swivel arm battle grip, like that. And as you can see, he has the red Cobra symbol. And he's clearly an officer and is the uh, commander of Cobra, so he outranks both of these guys. And in addition, other Cobra command officers, like the Baroness here, had the red Cobra symbol, and she would easily outrank uh, the Cobra soldier or the Cobra officer. And of course, the Viper pilot had the silver symbol, which would suggest he's an officer, and certainly he's more specialized than the Cobra soldier. But, I mean, it's really not clear whether that actually means he's an officer or not. Let's take a look at the sculpt of the Cobra soldier. He has one of my favorite features, the knee pads, which are sculpted onto the uh, the shin here, which, uh, to me, I just really liked this feature. It's, it's like a, I, as a kid, I always thought it was like a bonus feature to have knee pads, so I always liked the characters with knee pads. He has this, uh, webbing here that looks like it should be maybe straps for a backpack, but of course the figure did not come with a backpack. He's got a belt with some pockets. He's got this really strange looking loop thing, and I'm not sure exactly what that's supposed to be. On the updated version, of course, in the swivel arm version, it was moved from the side around to the front, and honestly, I'm still not clear on what that's supposed to be. He had these two bullet-like things, and this mystery gun that's attached to his uh, to his strap and it's not really clear what that is I don't have the original card the full card art for the Cobra Soldier on the file card you can see that it looks like basically a tube with a gun handle here's another view of it on the Fang helicopter art and also it still looks like a like a tube with a a gun handle. Now, I'm not generally a fan of science fiction weapons uh, on with the, the G.I. Joe action figures, with a few exceptions. So I'm going to choose to believe that this is not a laser gun. What I think it is, is a flare gun. And I think these projectiles may be intended to go with it, so that would make these flares. I guess it could be some kind of a grenade launcher.
but um, I think it looks more like a flare gun. And so that's my hypothesis. It's, uh, it's a flare gun, and these are the flares that go with it. So he can fire off a signal. He had gloves that matched the color of his uh, sleeve, and that's another difference between him and the Cobra officer, who had black gloves. On the back, his uh, straps kind of went diagonally like that. That's an interesting choice. He had a couple of pockets on the back. And on his butt, it has Hasbro's copyright information. It's got black boots with uh, these interesting little notches here. I don't know what those are, but it's a nice detail. I like it. Of course, we can't forget the mask, which was... Uh, typical of the Cobra soldiers, and a lot of uh, other Cobras also had this kind of over-the-nose mask. And he really was intended to be the nameless, faceless enemy. Let's take a look at the file card. On the file card, it simply says Cobra, codename the enemy. That's not really a code name, but whatever. Now, these file cards came on the card that the figure was on when you purchased it in the store. It was on the back of the card and you were encouraged to cut it out. You can see some of the original artwork from the front of the card here. And it had some nice artwork here and some information about the character. His primary, well his file name is unknown of course. This is not an individual. This is uh, one of many, and you were expected to army build these, meaning buy multiples and pretend that they are different people. Since you were expected to army build, uh, there really maybe isn't enough of these Cobra soldiers to go around for everyone who wants to uh, increase the size of their Cobra army. For that reason, there have been some replicas made of the Cobra soldier, and perhaps in another video I will do a comparison between a replica Cobra Soldier and the original. His primary military specialty is infantry. Secondary military specialty is sabotage. His birthplace, various countries, of course. Cobra recruits worldwide. Uh, his grade is E4 or equivalent. I don't think that's really relevant in uh, the Cobra organization. They would have their own sort of pay grade and ranking separate from the uh, uh, U.S. Armed Forces. In this section it says, one of the nameless, faceless legions of Cobra Command. And I kind of disagree with that. I think that the term Cobra Command should be reserved for the commanding officers, like Cobra Commander and the Baroness here. It says, each Cobra is highly skilled in the use of explosives, all NATO and Warsaw Pact small arms, sabotage, and the martial arts. Qualified expert, Scorpion, VZOR-61 machine pistol, Dragunov SVD sniper rifle, Uzi submachine gun, and M16. And of course, this Dragunov sniper rifle is what he came with here. And there are some really good theories about why this really is a good weapon for this particular character to have. Down here in this quote it says, Cobras swear absolute loyalty to their fanatical leader, Cobra Commander. Their goal? To conquer the world for their own evil purpose. So of course they are bad guys. They're actually kind of generic bad guys. But I really liked the Cobra soldier, and I liked Cobra in general as an enemy for G.I. Joe. Since it was an army going up against G.I. Joe, which is a more specialized team, it really was a very formidable enemy for G.I. Joe, because they wouldn't go up against just one Cobra soldier, they would go up against an entire legion. Well, that is my review of the 1982 Straight Arm Cobra Soldier. I hope you enjoyed it, and watch for more videos in the near future.